Well, a very warm welcome to you all this morning uh, for your Sunday morning Lord's Day service. I uh, just want to point you to the order of service and make mention of that. Uh, look, we put that the uh, items together really to uh, help connect the message with the scripture, with the uh, songs, so that as you are going through it, that you are fed uh, through the preaching of the word, through the singing of the word, uh, and through the reading of the word. And so we hope and pray that that is a blessing too. And I thank um, all those, particularly Rebecca Lim, who puts the, the songs together and for all those who make that possible. Uh, so make good use of that. Uh, also, uh, still acknowledging our current situation and pray that uh, the Lord is uh, taking care of your frustrations and anxieties and you are leaning on him as always. Uh, this is not how any of us want it. Uh, while we are preaching here and uh, and talking, I would prefer to be certainly speaking directly to you. So um, we appreciate your prayers as we are praying for you. Uh, it gives me pleasure, though, to introduce Joseph. Joseph, thanks for coming in this morning. Yeah, you're very welcome. Could you just introduce yourself, please? Right. Um, so as Craig said, my name is Joseph, uh, Joseph Magara. I am a Ugandan by nationality. Um, but I've been living in uh, Australia for around about five years now. Um, I have uh, a lovely wife, Sherry, and um, a lovely little one, Jedediah. Um, he's about nine months old. And uh, so, yeah, software developer by trade. And uh, yeah, that's me. That, that's good. And working from home at the moment. Yes, that's right. Um, now, I know that you are part of a men's discipleship group. And I'd like you to share with the, uh, with the church what that is and what you do with, with regard to that. Right. So, um, yes, I'm part of a men's discipleship group, um, the purpose of which is to uh, meet together to encourage each other to grow in godliness. Um, and so that will be in, in various areas in our lives. Um, the format of it is we will meet uh, periodically every two weeks. Uh, and on the off weeks, we will call one another um, with, we also uh, are committed to part of the part of um, the agreement when we join is to uh, we commit to uh, sharing with one another our the lessons that we're learning daily. Um, so you have to be in the Word, read a passage, share maybe a truth and application, um, the Scripture, so that you know we're encouraging one another uh, to grow in, in Christ. Yeah, that's fantastic. So that would be quite different to a say a um, life group. Uh, where you are there, you're, you are studying a part of Scripture, you have prayer, but this is for men uh, to unite, connect together, uh, to help each other. Um, what would be the key goal or some of the things that you are learning and through this and how is it helping you spiritually? Right, so um, maybe it might help to reference um, what it was like for me before joining the men's group and then, and then afterwards. So... Um, prior to joining the men's group, um, spiritually, I had been, uh, well, doing better than I had been in previous years, but I, there are certain spiritual disciplines that I didn't have in place. So being daily in the Word, um, you know, encouraging fellow believers. You know, I came to church. Um, I was part of a Bible study group, but um, those spiritual disciplines in my life, prayer, um, just weren't there. Um, now, in joining the group... Um, because of the commitments that we make to one another and because um, of the accountability that is, is present in the group, um, there's a lot more, I have experienced a lot more uh, spiritual growth than I had otherwise. Um, in, in chatting, I think I mentioned chatting with you this week, um, I've grown more so over these last, uh, what, what is it, six months or so um, than I had in the last three, four years. Um, so uh, there is so much benefit and blessing in, in being able to meet together in, in the accountability that's there, um, in, uh, yeah, just, just the spiritual growth that you experience, that the grace that God gives in, in, in having Christians meet together and encourage each other in spiritual growth. That's great. And really encouraging one another to stay in the Word of God, yep. find strength in those uh, ways of communion with Him. Now, you've said you've grown over the last six months more than you've done in the last three years, so I'd imagine you would want to recommend... Uh, others do this. So, why would you recommend them? Um, so, one, more importantly than anything I can say, Scripture commands us to do so. Um, if you 
if it's all right, I'll just read real quick. Um, Hebrews, uh, let's go up the passage. Um, Hebrews 10, uh, 24 to 25 says, And let us consider how to stir up one another to love and good works, not neglecting to meet together as, the, as is the habit of some, but encouraging one another and all the more as you see the day drawing near. Um, now, that we often will talk about that in the context of a church, and it is in the context of a church, but um, mo- it, it's so pertinent to us today in, in the environment that we're in. We're all isolated, staying at home. We're not meeting together as a church. It is so important to be able to uh, to meet together uh, in a forum, or Zoom, or uh, over a, a call or something, um, to encourage each other in, in godliness. Um, and there are other scriptures. So Titus talks about the older women uh, teaching the younger and the older men teaching teaching the younger. Um, and so scripture commands us to do so. Uh, but there's also um, just the benefits of, you know, once again, just referencing the environment that we're in, being isolated. There's been a lot of talk of how much um, damage that's doing to people, to a prolonged isolation. Um, you know, it's amazing that God has put in, in commands in his word to, to counteract that. Um, so, yeah, there's, there's physical benefits as well, community. Yeah. There you go. Thank you. Well, if you want to get to be involved in a sort of discipleship group, um, you could reach out to me and I could help with that. Uh, women, you could reach out to other women and just say, look, could you... Uh, keep me accountable to being in the Word of God. Could I call you once a week and we talk about the Scriptures and uh, and be strengthening one another um, or speak to your life group leader? Joseph, thanks for coming in, mate. Thanks and for uh, me. we'll uh, pass it over to Glenn if you'd like to come and give the announcements and prayer. Thanks. So thank you, Craig. Firstly, could I also add my good morning to you all at home on this Sunday, the 20th of September. All the announcements can be found in the Lord's Day e-bulletin, which we receive every Friday morning via email. Can I, on your behalf, commend Cynthia for developing an easy-to-read and navigate bulletin that's also very informative? So thank you, Cynthia. There are a couple of items in the bulletin which caught my eye as I read through it. Firstly, there's an item there titled Luke's Dispatches. It's a DVD series produced by Frontline Missions. There is a link with a four-minute recording of Craig doing a Zoom interview with Tim Gazee, where Tim explains the concept and rationale behind the series. I found it very interesting. I won't tell you any more. You should check it out. Secondly, Operation Christmas Child. This is an initiative of Samaritan's Purse, a shoebox with presents destined for children in third world countries at Christmas time that puts a smile on children's faces, which is a good thing in itself. But more than that, Samaritan's Purse also share the good news of Jesus Christ. So this is an opportunity to be a partner to put an eternal smile on children's faces and hearts. Samaritan's Purse have even developed a shoebox online so we can still participate even if we are locked down by COVID. Just go to the link. Lastly, there was a photo of a handsome young man in the bulletin who is the newborn son of Braden and Bree and goes by the name of Levi Thomas. A good biblical name if ever there was one. You can also check him out. Lastly, Craig is continuing his preaching series in the book of Acts this morning, whilst Brian Harper continues on in his series on the Lord's Prayer this evening. Let's come to a time of prayer. Let's pray. Our everlasting Father, we remember firstly who you are. The God most high, almighty, eternal Lord of hosts, all-knowing, all-seeing, righteous, holy, yet loving and merciful. When we reflect on who you are by comparison, 
we reflect on who we are. We acknowledge that our hearts are deceitful above all things and desperately wicked. Who can know it? Sadly, this describes us. Thank you for the promise that if we ask, you will forgive us and remove our sins as far as the east is from the west. Father, at this time, we ask for your forgiveness. Father, we have much to be thankful for. We thank you first and foremost for your Son, who came to save his people from their sins. We thank you that through Christ we can become your children. We thank you for family, for friends, for our church, for your provision of employment, food, homes and so much more. We thank you for our country that so generously meets the needs of its citizens at this time. There are things that weigh heavy on our hearts and we want to bring those to you. Lord, we pray for family members that don't know you, for spouses and parents, siblings, children, grandchildren. Father, we plead that you would intervene in their lives and convict of sin, of righteousness and of judgment. That they would come to you and you would be their Lord. We pray for those participating in the Christianity Explained course that they would understand the gospel message, repent and turn to you as Lord. Father, we pray for those that have experienced estrangement and fractured relationships. We pray for your healing, that there would be forgiveness and restoration. Lord, we pray for those experiencing ill health, we pray that they would trust in you as the great physician, that you would give doctors and health professionals skill in diagnosis and treatment. We pray for Richard Law and his continued recovery. We bring before you the expectant mothers within our church at this time, for Rebecca and Elizabeth and Gia, and for the lives that you are knitting in their wombs. We pray that each one will grow up to be a child of yours. We thank you and rejoice with Braden and Bree on the safe arrival of Levi Thomas. We pray for our Premier and his Cabinet in this difficult time in Victoria. We pray that they would make wise and sensible decisions. Father, we pray that in the midst of the isolation, the economic heartbreak that is being felt by many, that there would be a turning back to you. We pray for our Prime Minister and his government, help him to rule wisely and to make just laws. Lord, we bring before you our VCE students, the Eunice and Rachel S, Ernest, Rihanna, Philip, Rachel H, Isabel, Joseph, Jilin, Asher, Hishain, Elijah, and Christian. Lord, might they know that your presence with them. We thank you for Tim Cassie and the work of Frontline Missions. We pray that your gospel would reach and transform all peoples. We bring before you those that this church supports in such endeavours, for Simon Keppert, Tim and Georgie Valence Webb, Syl Ruddle, Hiker and Licker, Andrew Walkington, Mike and Fran Johnson. Father, we thank you that you hear our prayers, even though we are so small and insignificant. We pray that your name be glorified, that you be exalted, not only in our worship, but in how you choose to answer our prayers. We pray this in Christ's name. Amen.